Today I want to talk about why God allows such bad things to happen in our lives. Or in other words, why bad things happen to good people. For the past two or three weeks, I've been reading this book called Trusting God Even When Life Hurts. And in it, the author goes into much detail, giving various accounts from other writers, people in history, and he even gives a bunch of quotes from the Bible. I'm not even halfway through, but I still get the gist of it. Throughout the book, he's pretty much trying to say that God allows such bad things to happen in our lives because he has a plan for us that we could never fully understand. His plans for us are often very random and erratic, but everything that happens is in his control, and they also result in his ultimate glory and also for our well-being. A few years ago when I was still working in the grocery business, I was completely miserable. Everything was a mess. I was working inconsistent hours, there wasn't enough help, I had chronic back injuries, and not to mention the constant four to eight hour day anxiety. I prayed all the time that God would make things better and that he would provide me with another job. Almost three and a half years later, he finally answered my prayers, but in doing so, he was also testing me in the process. I was so depressed a month after I quit, I just felt so worthless and unwanted, like I no longer had a purpose in my life. But even though I didn't know what would happen, I still had faith. On my fourth month of unemployment, I started going to Bible study with my grandfather and brother-in-law at the time. A few weeks before that, both my grandparents talked me into going, even though I honestly dreaded the thought. Toward the end of each meeting, the leader handed out a piece of paper containing all the names of the people in my group and they had us fill in what they wanted us to pray for. When it came down to me, all I wanted them to pray for was for my anxiety, finances, and also a new job. Three short weeks after attending Bible study, knowing that people were praying for me, I got a call right out of the blue from my uncle's brother, who I only met twice, uh, telling me that he had a job opening over at his place. So he ended up setting me up with the general manager at my current job and uh, helped me to get in. Within three days after Christmas, I had the job. I'm now at a good job that I'm great at, well, I'm well appreciated for the most part, and also where my anxiety is nowhere near what it used to be. It reminds me of a Bible verse that I read a while back, uh, Matthew 18, 19 through 20, and it says, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. I feel that by attending Bible study for the first time in my life, I've demonstrated my faith in a whole new way, which really did take a lot for me to do. Looking back, I definitely had to go through all of that physical and emotional pain to get to where I'm at right now. I guess life isn't supposed to be easy. If it was, then there wouldn't really be much to learn from. And we wouldn't be able to develop both faith and emotional strength. Things definitely got better for me, and it took nearly four years to get there. Something that people always seem to bring up is karma. I refuse to believe in that whole karma thing because if that were true, then why would good things ultimately result from the bad things that were meant to harm us? Plus, karma is motivated out of selfishness. If we figure that we could do a bunch of good things to drown out the bad, then bad things wouldn't happen at all. I've never heard of anybody who's been exempt from bad things, no matter how much good they've done in the world. Look at Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King, and even Hitler. Of course, Hitler isn't even in the same league as these guys, but his story interests me. Both Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King were assassinated after living tremendously honorable and successful lives, while Hitler killed, brainwashed, and just hurt many, many people. After looking at this, why would karma allow such honest, hardworking people to die if they've spent their whole lives fighting for others? Look at the most famous of them all, Jesus. If you read the book of Matthew, it tells us that Jesus walked the earth, healing the sick, speaking faith into people who didn't deserve it. He accepted and forgave people who did bad things, and look what happened to him. He was hated, condemned, humiliated, hung on a cross, and ultimately left his physical body because he loved us so much. He did nothing to deserve what happened to him, but it still happened. Why? Because his death had a bigger impact than anything that he could have ever done to prove his point in this life. His life shows us how we should live our lives, and his death shows us why we should believe. 
Sometimes things like this happen to people who struggle with their faith or people who don't even believe in God. A lot of the times, tragedies bring people together in faith. Just look at their earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, famines, poverty, all throughout the years. Do you really believe that all those people deserve to die because they deserved it? Of course not. After something major happens that shakes the world, people come together and pray in public, they come to each other's aid, they do extraordinary things. What I'm trying to say is that bad things need to happen in order for us to clearly see, even if we don't understand it yet. Even though bad things happen from time to time, it's not like God isn't in control of the situation. Just remember, God has a plan for each one of our lives, and whether or not you want to believe it, what He really wants is for us to trust in Him, because He's the only one who can pick up the broken pieces of our lives.